Okay, when cutting a brake rotor that hasn't been machined before, we have to remove the inside lip and the outside lip. You can see those rust ridges, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we're going to do that by hand. So we turn the machine on. We're gonna manually take the crank, pull it out. And start cutting slowly by hand. After we've taken the outside lip out, we're going to use the hand crank and turn it in to cut the inside lip off. Remember when we're cutting by hand to cut slowly as not to bog the machine down. Notice when we cut, there's metal flakes that come up. They're flying pieces of metal that are very hot. You want to wear your proper PPE so you don't get hurt. In this case, safety glasses, and we can put a shield in front of it so that we don't get hit by the metal. Okay, after we've cut the inside and outside lip off of our rotors, we're gonna take these wing nuts, our lock nuts, and tighten them down. Once they're tight, we're gonna take our controls and we're going to zero them out because we need to know how much material we are cutting off of each side. If we cut the rotor too thin, we cannot use it on the vehicle. This does inches as well as millimeters. On the bottom, there's a calibration button Zero them out. We're talking in inches today. Generally want to take four thousandths of an inch out per pass. Anything less than that will create small vibrations in the brake rotor surface that we don't want. So once they're zeroed, we're gonna take our wing nuts, loosen them, and we can turn the cutting heads clockwise four thousandths of an inch. Lock our wing nuts down. And select the cutting speed over to the right. We're going to use a fast cutting speed. And we'll move the lever over to disc. Once we get about a half an inch into the brake rotor, we can take our silencing clamp and put it on the brake rotor so it will fit. Gonna pull the lever to neutral to stop it. I'm gonna turn the machine off so we can put our clamping silencer on. Take our silencing clamp, stretch it over the brake rotor, making sure that our dowel pins are in front of the cutting bits. And then take the band clamp, wrap it around our cutting head, and velcro it to the machine so it won't fall off. I'm gonna start the machine back up and finish our cut.
We're going to make our final pass. Remember to put it to one cut pass. This is going to cut slower so we have a better machine surface. We're going to be taking another four thousandths of an inch out. We're going to start our machine up, but before we do, we have to make sure that we cut at least about a half an inch before we can put our silencing band on. Put our silencing band back on, making sure the dowel pins are in front of the cutting bit. Okay, once we finish that pass, we're still not done yet. There are small tiny grooves cut into that brake rotor like a record player. We need to get those out by doing an indirectional pass. The easiest way to do that is to take a piece of sandpaper, turn your machine on, And apply the sandpaper to the surface, pushing it in and out, making a non-directional cut. And on both sides of the brake rotor. I'm not doing that to take material off, I'm just smoothing out any grooves if we made them during our machining process. The brake rotor is now machined. Before you put it on a vehicle, make sure to clean the surface off because there may be underlying metal pieces inside. That can rub off onto your brake pads and cause a squealing noise. Make sure to clean that off in a solvent tank. You want to make sure to take a dial caliper or a digital caliper and measure the thickness before and after the machining. To make sure that we did not take too much material off and the rotor can still be used on the vehicle. After removing the rotor we also want to make sure to brush off all the metal that has been machined. Keep the machine clean and in operating condition.